Good morning, this is Dr. Bill White again with the American Orthodontic Society and I want to talk about a, a very complicated orthodontic case here uh, that if you're just thumbing through looking at things well you, you might as well just thumb on but if you really want to learn something about orthodontics you'll study this case it has so much in it uh, that it's hard for me to put it down in a short uh, video. I'll try to make it as short as possible, but uh, this young lady has a condylar hypoplasia. In other words, the condyle has grown more on one side than it has the other side, and it kind of shifted her mouth over in that direction. Now, some of this was brought about by mouth breathing, and you can see the upper arch is much more narrow than the lower arch, uh, and even though the lower arch is uh, very narrow too, and we had to expand the cuspids down below, and if you notice, we brought the roots back, and this is stable, but for years this was thought that you could not expand the lower cuspids out here without it uh, deteriorating and going back, but you can. If you take the roots of the cuspids and go back, they don't have any sacred thing there that makes them go back. But if you just are in a big hurry and you spread the cuspid out like this, it'll come back this way. And I think that's where they made the mistake in that. But cuspids can be expanded. The palate can be expanded. Uh, the hypoplasia, or the lack of one condyle, to grow equal with the other one is very difficult to go. The teeth get off in the mouth. The, the occlusal plane is at an angle. So let me get in and start this case. And if you're interested in really learning orthodontics, which I hope most of the people are, but a lot of this stuff people can know. They don't even have to be an orthodontist or a dentist or anything. They can uh, look at a lot of the stuff. But let's, let's go and look at this and try to explain this as quick as I can. Here is this young lady, and she had some clips, uh, little metal clips in the mouth, in the tissue. Apparently she had some uh, arteries or veins or something that was uh, they blocked when she was young. I never did find exactly what they did but she has an anchylos molar, and we have to deal with that too, and <laughs> add it to the whole stack of other things that we have wrong. Now you you start seeing this condylopoplasia, uh, this, if you run right through the, the jaw is a little bit more off to the, to the right side, or shorter on the right side, uh, as you, you can't pick it up too much at this point, but uh, just remember about that. Now we've got crowded lower anteriors. I mean, there's no way uh, that these teeth are going to get in here. You're going to have to move the cuspids back and open this up. Now when you look at a set of models and the upper teeth are falling inside the lower teeth, actually the, the upper molar should be kind of like that holding the cheek out over here to keep you from biting it and it's gone over in the other side and uh, looking at it here I don't see it too much <coughs> excuse me I get kind of choked up here <laughs> this uh, but the upper jaw gets more narrow when you have a mouth breather so this young lady is a mouth breather and that causes her to she shifted the jaw herself to kind of chew better, putting the points of the upper tooth down in the groove here. And then this side, I think, stayed fairly close to what it was. Uh, it's tried to go over, but it didn't. Uh, now, the, the right, the left side of the mouth, uh, <coughs> we have this cross bite. And we put a palatal separator in this mouth, and you will see when we get through, I'm going to put those together, and you see how much bigger and broader this is. 
Now we're going to expand. We're going to expand this way on out here and have the cuspids come in there, and we'll put the cuspids with their roots tilted to the distal just slightly, and they'll stay that way. Uh, if you expanded the cuspids and you just spread them out like that, they'll come back. But if you spread them properly, they stay there, or they'll they don't have any sacred thing that brings them back in. It's got a little deep bite problem here too. Not anything as bad. Now this is 1984 when we started this. Now here's the palatal separator. And this was before I learned how to spread out the upper, but we were able to do it with this. And so I put this on the teeth and here's where the, it was. And we moved this out this wide so we widen the upper jaw that much and the lower jaw widened out some additional but we put the teeth on the right side of the the upper teeth on the right side of the lower teeth now uh, so these are a whole stack of things that are that are wrong and you've got a tilt in the occlusal uh, plane here uh, as we go through this now, over here, we're open on that side. It'll kind of come back together. Now, this was the side that was meeting correctly. The uh, left side over here uh, was not. Let me see it back here again. Okay. Now, this side, the upper teeth were fitting inside the lower teeth, and they're out on this side. Now, what you... When you're doing this with a palatal separator, you have to wear elastics from this side to go up to the inside of the upper and from the inside of the lower to the outside of the upper. And you can a, hold one side steady and you can separate the palate and move only one side of it over by, by the way you wear the elastics. And I don't show that in this deal, but we've got videos showing that. Uh, looks like they've got a mouthful of rubber bands when you're uh, working with it, but that's the way you correct that. Now, here the upper is widened out now, and both uh, it fits over the lower arch, and the lower arch is widened out. If you remember how wide we had this to begin with, these cuspids were in here somewhere like that, and now we've spread them out and they have the roots going back just tapered a little bit to the to the distal and they tend to stay there now here if you look at the panorex when we started this and they put these clips in and i have no idea uh i never did find out from who's the person that referred them what this was for this tooth is ankylos right here and it's got a defective root structure, but we were able to use it. And I had a wisdom tooth over here that I threw away. I guess if you had a, wanted to, you could have removed it and brought this tooth up here and then taken the wisdom tooth there. But that would have taken a long time for me to do that. So anyway, uh, this is 1982 and uh, we, go here. All right, we uh, separated, we opened the upper arch and put a retainer on it in this uh, video, I mean, uh, panorex that we're taking here. Now here is this tooth, this kind of ankylos, and the second molar is coming in down lower. It looks pretty good at this point. I don't know what her age was, but we've got a mouthful of baby teeth here. And we'll go ahead and expand that. And this, we had to take this tooth now and upright it and put it in here. And it is ankylos, so you have to loosen the tooth up. Uh, this one was fixed up. That actually, excuse me, this one is the one that was ankylos. This one, I think, we just upright the, the tooth itself. So. Let's go on to another 
video. So now we have we bring this up. It's got the crown sticking out here. We've got a problem picking that up, but we we know how to do that. And the same thing over on this side right here. You put the put your tube in there and put a little wire and bring it up and carry it over that way. Uh, now the upper is pretty well fixed out. There we're really socked in with that tooth and you see the wisdom tooth developing back in here and I think there's no hope for that tooth. In other words, the jaw's going up here and we're going to try to set this tooth up and we'll be crowded out and this tooth has probably got to go to be able to do that. Alright, we put the little pad on it right here on the side of the tooth and this is the bar this wire was here, we bring it up, hook it, and it picked that tooth up. Now go back and look at this again. I'm gonna go back. There's where that tooth was. Now if you think you can't do that, if you'll just learn how to put, put a tube on the side of the tooth and come out with a spring on it, and then you bring that up and hook it to a tooth or an arch wire if you got it in here, and I have not found a tooth that we couldn't set that thing up right like that. And there's no sense of, of all the, I'm going to show you, uh, I've got a case, somebody came back trying to pick a tooth up like that. And it is a ridiculous type of, of thing. It would never would work on there. So we all have to do it from the side. And here the tooth is. And there is a little thing, I did it from one corner, but I was over on the side of the tooth. And you, it picks the tooth up. And your spring is made out of a rectangular wire. So that's the way you do that. And you, so uh, that uh, tooth is not ankylosed. This one here was, and we had to loosen it up and bring it into place properly. And then we got this one in by this wire I think came out to here and it was the thing that brought that up and I don't have a picture of that that I know of other than this is x-ray but there's where uh, this looks like it's on top of the tooth but actually the tooth is sub something like this and this thing is is just stuck on the side it's actually uh, on the if we look at the side of the tooth the tube would be something like that on the side of that tooth. You just got to get to the side to bring it up. So we brought it up and then we pull it up closer and put it in line. Now there it is. This tooth is in line. We, we banded it. We've got a wisdom tooth down here. We've got one up here. Uh, uh, well, I think that's a wisdom tooth and we got one there. But the jaw is going up like this, and this is a young lady, and their the young lady will be pretty well mature as far as growth of the facial structure and the head and everything when they're 13 and a half or 14 at the most. If it's a, a young lady that's got a lot of male hormones, you know, sometimes they grow a little longer than that. I've got a case that we uh, show that too. So anyway, we get it lined up, the ankylose tooth, you can see the roots are developed properly, and we've got these wisdom teeth uh, forming down here. Now in this particular case, there's this tooth, if it grows, it's going to push this out of place. So we can't save it. Uh, if I had uh, wanted to take longer, I could have extracted this, moved this tooth over here, and taken this wisdom tooth. But I don't know too much about this wisdom tooth. It hadn't formed yet. So we uh, failed. We didn't do that. Didn't want to really do it, really. Uh, so here it is. And this ankylose tooth is dropped down below. And I you'd have to go in and loosen this thing up to cock it up. 
and the tooth can stay there all their life uh, and hear the wisdom teeth are coming in and uh, this may be my last panorex in here and show in this uh, case well no I've got a, another one here so we're going to take out or send her to an old surgeon I guess take it out and we got this fixed part of the way and this is gone now this is empty and this young lady will have a nice looking set of teeth you look at it this is 1989 I think in there and she's age 14 and two months old at this point so here's the facial structure uh, we have a very straight facial profile here and when you look at it from the top you'll see the, the if you come down through there this side of the mouth the condyle has grown more over on the left side than it has on the right side and the jaw is off to the left now this might have been brought about by her altering her jaw you remember the uh, upper teeth were fitting inside the lower teeth on this side of the mouth. Uh, now that doesn't make this grow different in condyl hypoplasia. And uh, I've treated some cases really bad. Hypo uh, hypo you can't do it without going in and surgically operating on these jaws and then you got the teeth off to one side and really the result I've got from the surgery wasn't worth it now if you look at this you'll see the occlusal plane is kind of beveled off to the side here now this is a complicated case and I'm not uh, if you have messed with orthodontics a good bit and know a lot about it I would not recommend you tackle a case like this unless you're somewhere where the nobody else can do anything for them uh, then you might uh, try doing that but uh, you're going to learn a lot and there's a whole stack of things wrong with this case but here's what we ended up with and we got these upper teeth over it's a beautiful set of teeth but they're at a kind of an angle like this coming across and I'm not going to try to change that uh, in there so uh, we were happy with it this way and so I'll show you the side and there's the uh, upper when we started and we put a palatal separator and here is the upper uh, after we had it spread out and here's the lower before we started and there it is after we spread it out and now we, we managed to get these side by side and uh, this is much smaller this actually the upper is probably bigger than that this second molar I never did get corrected properly here and you can see the lower where this is and we got these cuspids and look where the cuspids are here if you look at this see the cuspid would be coming off somewhere like that and now the distance between this and this is a tremendous amount in other words these teeth were in cross bite and now we've got it coming over like that so this is a very interesting case is a lot to learn and if you can learn how to do it and you're really good at other parts of orthodox you might tackle a case like this but it's not for the first time you ever get started in there so thank you for watching